believe the inspector may have an interesting case for us, Holmes. I told you, Watson, I am tormented by a migraine and I need to take my cure. I'll take only a moment of your time, Mr. Holmes. Go on then, Inspector. But make a stab at the essence, please. All right. A Mr. Melvin Tuttle, a junior partner with the law firm of Sloan, Swarthmore and Cartwright, dropped dead of a heart attack yesterday. We believe it was poison. Oh, yes, Sloan, Swarthmore and Cartwright is one of the most prestigious law firms in London. Pray let him continue, Watson. Uh, you may want to know that I have spoken with the partners. Sir Sidney Sloan says he never arrives before noon. Mr. Swarthmore was at his morning appointment at uh, Bell's Baths, and curiously enough, Mr. Cartwright began an unscheduled and indefinite leave of absence just two days before. My temples are splitting, Inspector. Motive? <clears throat> Another solicitor by the name of Harold Diggs was passed over for promotion three months ago. The position went to Mr. Tuttle. Diggs felt he was far more qualified, and uh, so he resigned. Ah, the jealous colleague. Certainly a motive for murder. Is there anything else, Inspector? I would suggest picking up a copy of the Morning Times. And if you're interested, I've got the contents of Tuttle's desk down at the yard. Thank you, Inspector. Now, if I may work on my recovery in peace. I believe the inspector may have an interesting case for us, Holmes. I told you, Watson, I am tormented by a migraine and I need to take my cure. I'll take only... Only I'm... Go back to... Yes, Mel Junior for fourth bit drop Leave it free. Swarth right. Did you stand? King. Hello, that the bones and bones with the bow that King. Hey, land. Did you try to swarth me? Leave it. Take it. Drop off my for Junior Mel. Well, Holmes, here are the contents of Tuttle's desk, just like I promised. A folder containing information on textile contracts, very tedious. Two trust files with lists of properties, stocks and bonds. Uh, one for the British Museum and one for a uh, Richard Mainhart. And a list of uh, various properties that they owned at one time or another. Uh, Disraeli O'Brien's name's on top. What's this? A key from Bell's Baths. And one gold locket, which says, uh, to VM with love, uh, MT. How sweet. Is there a label on the box? Yes. J.W. Benson Limited. Curious. Here's a bill for a room from the Knight's Arms Hotel. From the amount of it, it appears to be a monthly rate. Professor Murray? Whitson! Helms! What are you two young slews working on today? The Melvin Tuttle case, and it's Holmes and Watson, sir. Uh, that's what I said, didn't I? Uh, now, the yard delivered a whole pile of evidence for this one. Toffee, tea, tobacco, pipe. It sounds like my breakfast this morning. Although right now I'd prefer some fish and chips. What did you discover, HR? A toffee. Uh, C12, H22, oil, 93%. Uh, layman's terms, did you discover any poison? The toffee and the tobacco were merely toffee and tobacco. Mm. Now the tea contained the slightest trace, but more significantly, there was a higher concentration on the lip of the cup. What about the pipe? The tip of the stem. What sort of poison is it, Professor? China berry, a paralyzing nerve poison. Just traces can stop the heart permanently. It smells faintly a lilac. But you might read up on it in my book at the London Library. Where would one obtain such a poison, Professor? Uh, one might strike up an acquaintance with a South Sea Aborigine. Ah, it is not then readily available in London? Uh, no. Uh, thank you, Professor, for your time. Uh, how much time was it, gentlemen?
My word, someone was looking for something. And it appears that perhaps they didn't find it. Look, Holmes, correspondence from Mrs. Cartwright, dated 22 June. Darling, I cannot believe that it is over. Please, please come to see me. I love you beyond all caring, Faye. Heavens to mercy. What are those other letters, Watson? Hmm. They all have the same return address. 25 Chichester Street, SW, from someone with the initial VM. They seem to be dated back as far as mid-December. Read one, Watson, will you? Certainly. This one's dated 10 March. Your high spirits Sunday give me great hope. I believe in you and know that you will one day overcome father's objections. But if it should take longer than you would desire, know that I will wait for you. I will wait for you forever, Ginny. Good heavens, Holmes. I do believe young Tuttle was just a stud horse in disguise. Tuttle, that popinjay! Papa, please! Virginia, that would be quite enough. Tuttle had the unmitigated gall to ask for my daughter's hand in marriage, and I forbade her to see him. She has had utterly no contact with him since. That, I can assure you. That's not true! You defied my orders? How dare you! Young lady, I've a good mind that Mr. Monroe, please, let your daughter speak. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Mel and I met almost every Sunday in St. James Park and corresponded frequently. As soon as he had attained the position my father required, we were to be married. He was made a junior partner only last week. I think this might be important to you, sir. Thank you, Miss Monroe. Hmm. Most intriguing. I suppose everyone would say that Melvin Tuttle was immensely charming. Perfect manners, perfect dresser, perfectly eager to please. Why, every young woman he met was absolutely swept away by him. He was just perfect. And what would you say, Mrs. Porter? I would say he was perfectly nauseating. The man was more calculating than a mathematics table. Why do you suppose Mr. Tuttle was raised to the executive level? That baffles me more than life itself. But I do know that Mr. Swarthmore and Mr. Cartwright would have jointly made that decision. 
If anyone had asked my opinion, which of course they never do, I would have recommended promoting Mr. Diggs. He was an excellent solicitor who produced outstanding work for over 11 years. Am I to assume that Mr. Tuttle's work wasn't up to snuff? No, he was industrious, but thoroughly unexceptional. How did Diggs and Mr. Tuttle get along? Well, their relationship was quite strained. But who can blame poor Mr. Diggs being passed over for that promotion? And then, uh, no, I, I shouldn't gossip. Scuttlebutt is perfectly acceptable under the circumstances, Mrs. Porter. Well, Mr. Diggs was in love with Miss Spring, who was in love with Melvin Tuttle, who was in love with every woman, even, I believe, Mrs. Cartwright. Mrs. Whitney Cartwright? Yes. He used to escort her to various society functions at the request of Mr. Cartwright. In fact, just yesterday I posted a letter to her from Mr. Tuttle. Did you post anything else of interest? No. Just contracts, contracts, contracts. Five to textile firms in Germany, one to August Heathcliff, four to textile firms in Manchester. It was a most hectic day, not even counting Mr. Tuttle's dropping over. 